have you ever heard of Hobart Smith, Doc Hopkins, Vera Hall, Fleming Brown? Well, if you have, it's probably because of Stephen Wade. Uh, before his one-man shows, those were artists known primarily to musicologists and collectors of rare recordings. But Steve brought those into the consciousness of thousands with those shows. And I'm very pleased and proud to be presenting his third album on Patuxent Music, Hands on the Tune. I hope you enjoy it. In April 2023, uh, Patuxent Music, under the leadership of Tom Minty, uh, published this record. It's called Hands on the Tune. And it's a live record, it's recent recordings. I, about half the tracks come from a concert hall here in the state of Maryland near Washington, D.C. And the other half comes from a concert I did at the Old Town School of Folk Music in Chicago in um, April 2022. On this record, the idea uh, called Hands on the Tune is that tunes are common possessions, uh, freely shared. What's interesting and what I was taught early on was to look for the, well, the individual contribution, a distinctive performance of a, of a commonly shared tune. And that idea that was expressed by my teacher Fleming Brown, he derived it from this record here called Texas Gladden Sings Blue Ridge Ballads. This record was made in 1948 and Fleming purchased it in that year. And on this record, it's a, a brother and sister team. It's, Half of this record is a Texas Gladden, and half of it is her younger brother, Hobart Smith. And on a number of the tracks on this record, they actually perform together. And it was one of those performances, it was uh, their version of Poor Ellen Smith, that Fleming said just knocked his socks off. And it was, she singing this high mountain voice, keening, uh, high piercing tones, and Hobart is playing the banjo at just a tremendous velocity and with enormous virtuosity. And that tune just made Fleming want to play. Another of the pieces on that record was his version, a solo version in one of these tracks of Arkansas Traveler. And it's just enormously uh, complicated and rich with uh, syncopations and offbeat notes. And he plays it in several parts. As a record collector, producer of Born in the Mountain radio show, and an old-time musician myself, I've been a longtime fan of the work and dedication to the music of Stephen Wade. There's a lot of folks out there trying to emulate that old-time sound, but Steve is different. His respect is clear in every note and word, and his knowledge of the music and the history is intimate, but he possesses the rare quality of somehow tapping into the essence and channeling those great early performances while making the songs and tunes he plays very much his own. With Stephen Wade's hand on the tune, it's evident that our traditional music is indeed being held in sacred trust, and you'll hear it in every note of his new record out on Patuxent Music. Another source of material on this record uh, was the musician Pete Steele. I played two pieces that come from his 1938 recordings that he made for the Library of Congress. And uh, this is when he recorded his famous uh, Coal Creek March. He, Coal Creek March uh, is also based on an earlier tune called Spanish Fandango, the structure, musical structure of the tune. And uh, the piece that I play on here, uh, I play his song Last Payday of Coal Creek, which is a ballad, sort of a blues ballad. The other one is the Spanish Fandango, and I had the great honor that I just I just can't get over that his daughter, whose favorite tune her father played was Spanish Fandango, uh, is that her his daughter and, and his grandson they gave me Pete's banjo. Uh, I have it right here. And when his grandson gave it, he said, that's his grandpa's strap. Now don't you mess with it. And I have it. And it still has Pete Steele strings on it. This has got his DNA is in this banjo right here. And uh, so this connection between the players and the instruments and the music, this is the thing. What ensures the continuity of this music? The way I learned from the very start was connection through people. 
I had my teacher Fleming, but I had, I was very lucky, I had his teacher, Doc Hopkins. And Doc had, was born in 1900 in Harlan County, Kentucky, and he came up to Chicago in 1930 to sing on the National Barn Dance. And then in 1948, the same year that Fleming picked up this record, he contacted Doc at the st radio station at WLS, and, and Doc became his teacher. And then when I was a teenager, and met Doc the same year I met Fleming. Uh, he allowed me to play with him and I got to be his accompanist all the way to the end. And that's the part that has mattered so much to me. So it's important to listen to records, absolutely. And like this collection, there's 50,000 records in this room. And, and, it's, and the idea that Fleming had with this record, he said, you know, listen to this performance of this song. Look how, look how, look how Hobart Smith handles uh, Arkansas Traveler, or look how Hobart Smith plays uh, Poor Ellen Smith. And that's really what's going on here. It's just my attempt to just enter into this music as best I can. <laughs>